Oh my gosh, good afternoon, YouTube land, and happy Friday, and TGIF, thank God it's Friday, you know, I just want to give a quick shout out to Tomcat, my daughter made you a picture, we thank you Tomcat. <laughs> you know what the the most awesome thing about the internet is meeting people and um getting to know them over the years and supporting them praying for them keeping them in your daily prayers and knowing their situation and I believe that you know for the people that are like super duper blessed you're blessed to be a blessing to other people and speaking of being a blessing to other people just for two minutes just hear me out here there's a homeless man that literally he doesn't sleep at the the um, the men's shelter in Fort Myers because it's like really far away, and he has two two sons that are in their twenties that live down the street with their grandmother and their mom, and every day those boys are literally I'm not even making this up they're literally kicked out of the house like at 9 or 9 30 in the morning because the grandma their grandma's like i don't want you guys hanging around my house all day being bums so go be go be with your dad the bum at the park and i just like the past two years was getting to know bill christian health issues just you know down on his luck and i can tell that he is just one of those people that he's trying you know to get his own place like he asked me if i knew anybody that could rent him a room and i don't i don't know anybody and i've been asking around at the church but the church that i go to now is um it's like a, it's a 20 to a 30 minute bike ride from my house, which I do it like no problem. I mean, Bill's even gone there with me too. It's no big deal, but it's too far for him because he can barely walk. So I don't, I mean, he said a month ago that he was going to be sleeping under a bridge or in the bushes because he didn't have a place to stay. So I brought this up to my husband. I'm like, you know what, honey? We have an, an extra room. We can totally convert that into a bedroom. You know, so Bill, the homeless guy, at least has a roof over his head. Well, my husband wasn't going for that. He's like, this isn't a halfway house. And you know, I mean, I have to respect my husband. You know, he pays the bills and he, so, you know, he calls the shots. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people that need help. And I raise my hand because I'm, you know, I never will ask for help un unless I really, really need it, you know. And so once again, we thank you, Tomcat. <laughs> I do too. That's for you. Okay. Moving right along, today's video is all about making peace with God. Okay, a lot of people in this world, when something doesn't go their way, or when something happens, or when you get diagnosed with something, you know, because you're getting older, and as we get older, our body breaks down. Our brains break. Everything breaks down. 
okay? Seriously. And the only way you're going to make it is if you have faith. If you trust the Lord, if you rely on the Lord, if you know that the Lord is your strength, if you wake up in the morning and thank God for a brand new day, you know what I'm talking about. Life is not easy. And, and one thing that I like about my life and being able to homeschool my four kids is I get to talk to them not only as a mother, but also as like a teacher. And I mean, I don't want to call myself, you know, a biblical like scholar or teacher, but you know, I, I was brought up in the faith and I've lived a hard life. I've, I mean, I, I lived a life of hard knocks. You know, it's like that song. It's a hard life for us. Shoot, where did I hear that song? From Mini Me. Ooh. I can't even, Okay, whatever. I can't remember where I heard that song. But it's true. Life is hard. For a reason. I don't care who you are watching this video right now. Life is is not easy it's not it's hard it's so there are so many difficult choices and sometimes you're gonna find yourself in a bind and sometimes you're gonna be in a relationship and it's like not working out and then there's kids and you're like oh my gosh now what so getting personal and sharing my personal life, which I don't have a problem doing because it might help somebody. I am unhappily, unequally yoked. I, you know, I, I help Bill, the homeless guy. I give him food. I wash his clothes. Whatever I can do to help him, I do it. And the other day, I went to check on him at the park, because that's what I do. I'm like, he's there every single day, sitting in a chair. And so I was sitting with him, and he's like, man, Donna, I, I haven't had a shower in days. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, well, you know, maybe, you know, may, not today, but maybe tomorrow you can come over and I'll let you use the shower. Well, one of my kids was eavesdropping and they came home and told their dad. They're like, dad, mom's going to let, you know, homeless man Bill come into the house and take a shower. I mean, they threw me under the bus. And I was like, oh my gosh, why did you guys tell on me? Why? Not only did I get in trouble by my, you know, by Mark, my husband, he, he was like, just not happy and just not going for it. He's like, it's not our problem that, you know. And I'm like, you know what, honey? I know it's not our problem, but the Bible says I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I, I was homeless, you gave me shelter. You know, all I'm saying is if you look the other way and you know someone needs help and you got this little pinch in your heart like, you know what, I should do something and then you don't, that pinch in your heart, that's the Holy Spirit calling you to be the special one, to step out on your faith, to be a blessing, to help someone. 
The Bible says in the last days, men and women are going to be so selfish. They're going to be all consumed about themselves. They're not even going to bat an eye again. Um, they're not going to look twice at a homeless person. They're going to look the other way like, not my problem. Don't even see ya. Don't want to be ya. There are so many people that look the other way. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I know there's a lot of scammers out there. You know, they there was like a documentary um, about like a homeless person and they were always holding up their sign. Oh, please help, you know, Vietnam vet, no money, help me out. And people would drop in money, you know, at these stoplights for the for this guy, you know. And the thing is, the guy was making like one to two hundred dollars. I'm not making this up. One to two hundred dollars a day for standing out on a corner with a sign saying, God bless you, Vietnam vet, please help. And then Somebody was like, wow, you know, I don't even know how they even got the video footage, but I'm pretty sure I saw a video about it. This homeless person, supposed homeless person, they put their sign down in the bushes and got into their BMW and drove away. And people... I mean, there were like eyewitnesses. They're like, wasn't that the guy on the corner? He got into a BMW and drove away. I know what is wrong. See, that's why people are like, <laughs> that's why when there's people like me, they're like, I need help. People are like, oh yeah, you need a lot of help, but you know what? You don't need money, girlfriend. You need counseling. You need therapy. <laughs> Jesus is my therapist, okay? That's all I'm saying. Well, anyways, I just wanted to do a video, not to bore anybody, but to hopefully help somebody. Making peace with God. Whenever something bad happens or negative and you just, you know, you go through a struggle or something, a lot of people will blame God. Bill was doing it the other day. He's like, you know, I pray and I read my Bible and I've been praying to, to rent a place for over a year. And so far, you know, I just, I just, there's been no leads and nobody's coming over here to help me. It's, you know what it reminded me of? In the Bible, there was a cripple and once a year, the angels would come and stir up um, a pond or a, a swimming pool. I can't remember, but it's in the Bible, and I'm sure you guys are like, oh, yeah, I know what she's talking about. But if you were like the first one in, you would get your answers, <laughs> you would get your prayers answered. So this cripple... Um, he always was trying to get to the pond where the mirror, you know, where you could get your answers prayed, your prayers answered my brain. Um, and he, Jesus saw him and was like, if you really want to get in that pond, you know, after the angel stirs the waters around, you gotta, you gotta get in it. Get in the pond or the wall. You know, I can't remember. See, in my Bible, you guys, I'm sorry. I have my Bible here, but I can't. I don't remember what book it's. <laughs> it could be in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Ephesians. It could be in Corinthians, Romans. I'm not sure, but you could do a search thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you really want something... You have to, 
you have to really want it and you have to pray and you have to have faith and just believe and wait on the Lord. Wait. And I used to always have this joke that I would always say whenever someone's waiting for something, I'd start singing Tom Petty. The waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> because it's true. How many of you guys and girls, how many of you need money right now because there's a bill or there's, you know, maybe car insurance went up. Maybe your landlord raised the rent. You know, and so now you're like, oh my gosh, I live paycheck to paycheck. And it's just not cutting it. You know what I'm talking about. That's why I had to work two and three jobs as a single mom. I was hustling to pay bills, to keep a roof over me and my daughter's head. I know what it's like. My life has not been easy. And if it wasn't for my faith, and if it wasn't for my determination, and if it wasn't for, for my decision and my choice to trust in the Lord with all my heart. See, that's the problem with people. They pray and then expect it to just drop in their lap. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes, you know, I think the reason why Jesus left the earth at 33 years old is because he was doing all these miracles, feeding thousands of people, and he turned thousands of men in into bills you know just sitting around wait waiting waiting for the bird to come bring them food because that's in the bible too it it was a prophet and he got fed by a bird i'm not making this up and it's it's true i know it sounds crazy but it's true did you know there's also in the bible there's there was a talking donkey and I could just hear a joke right now. Yeah, Donna, we're watching a talking donkey right now. Should I do a birth? <laughs> a talking donkey, get it? Okay. Anyways, we are going to be reading out of Isaiah right now. Just for, a, just for like two minutes. Two minutes. Bug door, please. Door. And so anyways, we are going to be in Isaiah chapter 27. And I'm going to read just a little bit because I want you to hear this. Seriously. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. In that day... The Lord will punish with his sword. His fierce, great, and powerful sword. Leviathan, the gliding serpent. Leviathan, the coiling serpent. He will slay the monster of the sea. In that day, sing about a fruitful vineyard. I, the Lord, watch over it. I water it continually. I guard it day and night so that no one may harm it. I'm not angry. If only there were briars and thorns confronting me. I would march against them in battle. I would set them all on fire. Or else let them come to me for refuge. Let them make peace with me. 
Yes. Let them make peace with me. That's where we're going to stop right now. I just want everybody in YouTube land to know today is the day that you can totally change your circumstances. Today is the day where you can make that choice that changes your life forever. Today is the day that you can make that decision to, to not only be a listener or a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. See, a lot of people hear what they're supposed to do, and a lot of people hear the message, but they wake up in the morning in the same shambles that they woke up in the night before because you're not making the proper choices you're 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 not trusting the lord you're you're not praying prayer changes everything when you pray and sincerely mean it from the bottom of your heart change will come to you i'm a witness the hard part is once you once you understand that it's you that has to change see nobody can change you except you and it starts with a prayer and a choice and then you have to do the baby steps to walk through a new beginning knowing that you're no longer alone knowing that you can do it knowing that you shouldn't be afraid you know everybody gets a little bit of fear because we're all afraid of the unknown we don't know what's what you know when 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 there's when you don't know what's going to happen like if you're if you're facing eviction or if you're going through a relationship and it's just like over splitsville and you know and you got to start over that can be challenging that can be mentally and you know emotionally it can be so overwhelming and challenging that you just want to throw in the towel and go i can't do it and you're right you can't do it by yourself but you can do all things through christ jesus who will give you the strength you will make it you can do it you know i i hear people oh i can't do that you know it's not that they can't do it what they really mean to say is i don't want to i don't want to like you know with people that have bad habits you know i don't know i had bad habits i used to wake up and do stuff to get through the day <laughs> and then it was like oh my gosh look at me what am i doing you know you have to stop you have to you have to make a choice and go i'm not going to do this anymore it's called right living you know i i'm still i'm still trying my best i'm not perfect i I'm a sinner saved by grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Jesus loves you. He loves all of us. He knew your name when you were still in your mom's womb. Not even born yet. Jesus knew you. 
He knew you were going to grow up and do what you're doing right now. He knows all about you. And see, friends, we are living on borrowed time. The Bible says that God is going to make men. Um, okay, I, I don't remember where it's at, but men are going to be scarce. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, I hate the brain freeze part. Men are going to be... Um, There, there's going to be hardly any men. I mean, you know, after the rapture happens, men are just, men and women, and chill, I mean, mankind, let me just do that. Mankind, it's, you're going to like wander around for miles and miles and miles until you find another human being. That's how the planet's going to be, you know. I know it sounds scary, but it's true. It's in the Bible. God plans on making man... You know how the animals in the ocean, how they're like beaching themselves? How the dolphins, how, how you see these animals in the sea like beaching themselves? Because there's something in the water that is just not good. You know, it could be an oil spill. Maybe the dolphins are getting those sonar things, you know, where, they, where they're picking up stuff in the ocean. Like, okay, we, we can't live here anymore. So they're beaching themselves. They're, you know, I mean, there could be a lot of reasons why these animals are doing it. They just don't want to live. You know, there's something telling them that, okay, you need to get out of the water. You, you're not going to make it. You're not going to survive. I just want you to know, after this life is over, this physical world, this, you know, this body that we live in, after we breathe our last breath, that's not the end. That is actually the beginning you have to lay your life down in order to have it back again. You have to have faith and believe and have hope and know that you know that you know that God Almighty is for you. He's not against you. God Almighty wants you to have a life, a full life, a happy life, a blessed life. And the thing is, there's a lot of people that just don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear about God. I don't want to hear about Jesus. You know, those are the people we need to keep in prayer. Because if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your problems are going to get bigger. You think your life is miserable now? Keep rejecting Jesus because God has a way of opening up people's eyes because, of, because people are just so stubborn and they're stone cold and they have hearts of stone. You need a brand new heart. To where you actually care about other people besides yourself. And you need to make peace with God. For me, that's how my life changed. I, I used to do drugs and drink and thinking, oh, geez, you know, if God loved me, why was I brought, you know, why was I, why was I born and why did I get abused? And, you know, it's not God's fault. See, God already knows what we're going through. And he has the answers. He's just waiting for you to open your mouth and to seek him. And the way you do that is prayer. 
It's prayer. God answers prayer. I know because I do it all the time. And so that's it for this video. I'm going to click off. And I want to just thanks again, Mr. Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. We thank you, Tom, Cat Major Tom.